a video I've been trying to produce for over a month, and it's still kind of broken. Before we jump in, I've been trying to find a way to include high quality samples of the music files I use for testing, and I fought an unending road of YouTube nonsense, to a point where I'm tired of fighting. Even using music files in the public domain or Creative Commons Zero, my channel's still getting dinged for copyright. I'll be looking into some alternatives or maybe posting some samples to the Patreon. I'll keep you all posted. Now, onto the actual video. I've been asked on numerous videos to do more testing of wireless headphones like I do for the headphone jacks on our phones. You know, with the charts and the graphs and stuff. And it's worth explaining, that's extremely difficult to do consistently. You can't just line up a driver with some good mics. I have great microphones, but you kind of need a good soundproof room, a really quiet lab. That means a lot of headphone reviewing is just sharing a more anecdotal experience. I can give you my opinion. You know, these can support APTX, these support LDAC, but I like these better than this and blah, 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 blah. And that's cool when you find a reviewer whose tastes align with your own, but we haven't seen much reviewer data on codec quality. Most articles and reviews just parrot the manufacturer press releases. So if Qualcomm and Sony are making claims on performance, it would be nice if we could confirm those claims. I like numbers and I also like fair comparisons. I mean, testing two different pairs of cans already skews the data way too much in the types of hardware each pair of headphones might use. So what we need is one device with a standard analog output that can cover multiple audio codecs. After reviewing the FIO BTR1K, I was pleasantly surprised by the quality on this mid-range Bluetooth and USB-C portable amp. So I splurged on the BTR3, which steps up to higher quality compression, supporting both LDAC and APTX HD, in addition to AAC and SBC. Running tests, recording samples, and listening to my favorite tunes. What did we find? Bluetooth audio is in better shape than I thought it was. In general, this hierarchy holds true, from best at the top to less good moving down the list. There are some important points to note though. When testing LDAC under optimal conditions, it scores an easy victory. It's really difficult to fight such a substantial data transmission advantage, even with better compression. And LDAC does properly succeed in maintaining a significant amount of my original 24 and 32 bit audio files. Instead of the normal fallback argument that humans can only hear a certain range, LDAC almost matches cabled 32-bit DACs in terms of fidelity. Playing back a simple frequency curve from 10 hertz to 30 kilohertz, the FIO using LDAC was scientifically more accurate through the low end than my LG V40 connected directly to a cable. We are talking about mostly infrasound, and I happen to believe that the frequencies we can hear will be affected by frequencies of sound we can't hear, but I'll let you folks fight that out in the comments if that's any valuable metric to consider. However, LDAC was also a little easier to degrade. A little distance from the receiver, putting the phone in a back pocket. When it crashes to its most stable connection speed, it's not difficult to hear a degradation in quality. Under similar distance testing, APTX HD seemed to maintain a more stable connection at that top data rate. APTX HD does not deliver the throughput to produce a lossless audio experience, and it will truncate the frequency range to near CD quality. But we are at a point where even listening to high quality 24-bit audio, I think only the most nuanced human ears will reliably detect differences between the top two codecs. I doubt in a blind taste test on the same headphones that I would be able to hear those differences. And taking a listen to the bottom two codecs on this list, I think people too often get hung up on branding. There's a lot of buzz and excitement about fancy codecs, but AAC is still a very strong contender. And I think SBC has gotten a bad rap for being the compatibility fallback codec. In my testing, it certainly performed the worst, but it was also connected to a decent DAC and amp. Testing with this little adapter, the differences between SBC and AAC were far less severe. I think people slam SBC because hardware that exclusively uses SBC is usually cheap. And when the playing field is leveled with the same DAC, same amp, same headphones, SBC unsurprisingly performs a lot better. Software and hardware 
working together. While mobile audio fans are getting hyped up about premium codecs, AAC shines as a great all-rounder. It dedicates most of its space towards the chunk of hearing we primates value most. It does slam into a brick wall when playing back higher frequency samples, but there's more than enough bandwidth and headroom for higher quality, compressed music files, MP3s, or iTunes compression. That, and if you have an iPhone, it doesn't really matter what your headphones support or what audio files you use. Everything is getting converted and sent over AAC regardless. So it's no great surprise that numerous consumer headsets have come out this year circumventing APTX and LDAC support in favor of AAC. AirPods, Pixel Buds, even some of the newer LG neckbands AAC is going to do most folks just fine, especially when paired with decent hardware. It's worth reiterating, listening to audio isn't just one thing. Often, we soundtrack other activities, you know, rocking some tunes for a workout or entertainment for a long commute. However, there are times where we want to sit and focus and let the music be the primary activity. This breakdown is very encouraging. If you're just soundtracking, the question that remains what hardware is paired with the codec. If you're trying to drown out gym equipment, for example, open ear earbuds like the AirPods and Pixel Buds are really bad for you. And other manufacturers have started incorporating dual and hybrid driver designs, which can be fun for pumping up your workout playlist. When music is the primary activity, we now have much better options for enjoying a higher quality wireless experience. Now, I still have some reservations about Bluetooth connection stability, but when you're sitting down to enjoy an album, you're likely listening in a fairly optimal situation for the tech to keep a good connection. Though if you do take the plunge on high quality Bluetooth cans, make sure your phone is actually using those higher quality codecs. It'd be a little embarrassing to spend that much money on some headphones and then not really get out of them what you paid. This test also reinforced for me that it's worth it to have a couple headphone options for different situations. You know, I hate working out with cans on, but I like comfy cans when I'm on an airplane, and I greatly prefer bone conduction when I'm outside and I wanna hear the world around me. I honestly don't believe in a one-size-fits-all solution for pretty much any gadget or technology. This test just helped to reinforce that, but I was happily surprised to literally see how much better wireless has gotten. Though I still have to campaign for the headphone jack, and for cables. While Bluetooth under ideal conditions is now nearly indistinguishable from cables, I still want good cabled options. More variety for types of headphones, fit and style. Headphones that don't require higher price tags to include batteries and radios. Never face signal dropout or skipping. And headphone jacks are still more universally compatible with all kinds of different multimedia platforms and recording gear. Verifying these marketing claims was a fun audio experiment to kick off the new year. From the early days of terrible one-ear headsets to now, Bluetooth is finally competing against the quality of cabled audio, which is good because audio over USB-C is still a raging dumpster fire but I'm gonna have to save that rant for another video. And I wanna leave this off with a question for you fine folks. Do you think 2019 will be the last year for the 3.5 millimeter phono jack on phones? Leave a comment down below. Those are the kind of conversations I love getting into. And for those of you curious about the FIO BTR3, I'll leave a link in the video description. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, and subscribing. While gadgets still have headphone jacks to test, I'll continue producing deep dives on headphone quality head on over to patreon.com slash some gadget guy, where my camera and audio deep dives are patron exclusives. And you'll get other fun perks like early access to videos and production diaries. It's a fun little community of like-minded tech pals, so I hope you'll check it out. Patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters, the Instagrams, and the Facebooks, and I will catch you all on the next video.